The recent weeks in Ukraine were very loud. Throughout May, Russia conducted more than 20 missile and drone attacks against targets deep inside Ukraine. Most of these were intercepted, thank God, or rather thanks to the relentless work of those manning Ukrainian air defense systems, as well as the protection provided by those systems. It's blatantly clear, without the US American Patriot or NASAMS, the German Iris T, Gepards and others, the result of these attacks would have been catastrophic. Welcome to Talking Tactics, where in this episode we want to quickly outline the story of how and why Russia uses drones and missiles to attack Ukraine and how they have adapted their strategy throughout the full-scale invasion. According to a statement by Ukraine's foreign minister in May, the Ukrainian air defense intercepts around 75% of these airborne attacks via a combination of ground-based systems and Soviet era jets like the MiG-29. That leaves 25%, however, that still reach their target. Throughout the war, Ukrainian air defense has gotten much tighter, for one due to the arrival of Western systems, and on the other hand due to the huge amount of practical experience gained by the armed forces. So as a countermeasure, Russia simultaneously launches drone and missiles from a range of different locations at the same time in what at first glance appears to be totally random. But it's not. There's a strategy behind it, and also a story. In the first weeks of the invasion, Russia mostly targeted a lot of military and critical infrastructure. Railway lines, garrisons, depots and weapons factories. Those were the days when they thought they could win the war. Don't get me wrong, civilians were also targets at that time, but their goal was still a swift victory. But with the failed advance on Kyiv, the counter-offensive around Kharkiv, the liberation of Kherson, they started to realize that victory was slipping out of reach. And Russia's frustration resulted in more extreme and gruesome measures. In Ukraine, people plainly call it terrorism. The spring and summer of 2022 saw a multitude of really barbaric attacks on civilians, for example the attack on the train station of Kramatorsk in April, the strike on Vinitsa in July with 28 dead, and the strikes on Dnipro in June, July, September and October. With winter approaching, Russia began to focus on the energy infrastructure, attacking power and heating plants all over the country. The idea was to force the population into submission by freezing them out in the dark and cutting them off from running water. Over the winter, Ukraine suffered from severe power and heating shortages. The situation, once again due to the perseverance of the people and also due to Western aid, is much better now, although there are cities close to the front line that suffer from a lack of electricity and running water. Now, in the beginning of summer, Russia is worrying about Ukraine once again advancing and recapturing its lost territories. So the new strategy is to exert a maximum amount of pressure on Ukrainian air defense systems, hoping that they will fail due to overload. It's an old Russian strategy, like Stalin did with throwing men at the front in World War II, Wagner's strategy in the so-called Operation Meek Grinder in Bakhmut, just that now they're doing it with drones and missiles. And it's not like the Russians don't have a few tricks up their sleeves. Let's take the attacks with so-called suicide drones on the capital, for example. Russia uses mostly Iranian-made Shahid drones to attack Kyiv. Most of them are shot down, but the question does arise, how do they get there? They do have to fly hundreds of kilometers over Ukrainian territory. What Russia often does is to use the river Dnipro, which flows to the entire country from north to south. Russia flies their drones at night and at low altitudes over the river, which makes them much harder to spot. Only when reaching the capital do they leave their flight path over the water and rise above the city to attack. At the same time, they fly reconnaissance drones to see where Ukraine's air defense systems are positioned when they shoot down the so-called suicide drones. By the way, newly leaked intel shows that these drones are launched mostly via the airports of Sirsha and primorsk Akhtarsk. When it comes to missiles, Russia has different strategies. Targets closer to the border, like the city of Kharkiv, for example, suffer mostly from attacks with S-300s. The S-300 is originally an air defense system that can be used to attack targets within a range of up to around 400 kilometers, similar to their multiple launch rocket system Iskander. Russia also uses missiles from the Navy fleet in the Black Sea. Another at first sight more surprising method has been to launch cruise missiles from as far as the Caspian Sea. But why launch missiles from thousands of kilometers away? The main reason Russia does that is simple. They have a couple of airfields in that area that can service large strategic bombers like the Tu-95, for example in the city of Engels in southwestern Russia. The other reason is that with this distance, the cruise missile can change trajectory a couple of times to confuse the enemy's air defense. Also, the air alarm has to be on for the entire flight time, causing a psychological effect on the target country. Of course, there's also a safety aspect. If you launch a missile over the sea, if anything goes wrong, the damage is contained. If you look at what happened in the Russian city of Belgorod, you understand why. On March 23, a malfunctioning missile crashed into the city. And in April, a Russian Su-34 accidentally bombed the city in a very strange occurrence whose details never really became public. Putin, by the way, once signed a treaty guaranteeing that the Caspian Sea is only to be used for peaceful purposes. 
That's just one of the many reasons why the Ukrainian side is still very suspicious of the idea of negotiating or signing any kind of deal with this Russia. Apart from just a sign of frustration, there is a financial aspect to this strategy. An Iranian Shahid, depending on the variant, can cost as little as $20,000 to produce. The same goes for a Russian Landsat drone. Only one of the surface-to-air missiles used by Ukraine ranges from around $140,000 for a Soviet-era S-300 up to hundreds of thousands for a US-made NASA. So, the drones are cheap, but to defend against them is crazy expensive. Also, Russian rockets like the Iskander or cruise missiles like the Caliber cost less than, for example, one Pac-3 missile for the Patriot air defense system, which is priced at over 4 million US dollars. But you see, this price war is another way in which Russia is trying to put pressure on Ukraine, hoping that the financial and military backing of its Western partners will be exhausted before its own resources are. There are exceptions where it's the other way around, however. For example, Russia's supposed super weapon, the Kinjal or Dagger, that can cost over 10 million to produce, and as we have seen in the past month after being intercepted by the Patriot, it is, thank God, not as super as it was made out to be. The main difference, by the way, between a cruise missile like the Caliber and a ballistic missile like the Kinjal is the flight trajectory. A cruise missile is for the most part self-propelled and flies in a relatively straight line and at a lower altitude. In contrast, a ballistic missile's flight path is like a large arc up and down again, where they often enter a suborbital height. So, to summarize, according to the British Defense Ministry, Russia is continuously losing the initiative in this war. Their actions like these attacks are in fact largely reactions. And we feel it here on the ground very clearly. The fear of being overrun by the larger neighbor is gone. The goal is now to win back what was lost. But that, of course, does not change the fact that any attack by Russia can and does have deadly consequences. And that no one in the world should have to live under the constant threat of dying a violent death while sleeping in their apartment because someone decided it's a good idea to launch a missile at their home. Thanks for watching Talking Tactics. Hit like and subscribe and see you next time.